Welcome to Electron Online, and in this video we're going to show you one more example of how to execute an absorbing Markov chain type of problem. In this case we have the standard form. Standard form means that the ones and zeros are in the upper portion of the matrix and then all the numbers on the lower portion of the matrix. To make this a little bit more clear, let's say we have an example like this where we have let's say three stores. On the, in the three stores we have store A which keeps 30% of the customers going to the same store but 20% will go to B and 50% will go to C. Notice that store B will retain 100% of their customers and store C will retain 100% of their customers. Since all the customers that end up in store B and C will not return to another store, those become absorbing states and so eventually all of the, uh, po the entire population will end up in both B and C. Now the proportion of that will depend upon two things. One, what the what we call the stable transition matrix is and then also what the initial state matrix is because the end result when we have more than one absorbing state the end result is that it will depend upon the initial state as well and we'll see some examples of that. So starting over here notice that this is our initial matrix the what we call the transition matrix representing this situation of course we then want to first put into the standard form which means instead of having the from ABC to ABC then becomes from BCA to BCA because we want to have the ones on the diagonal like this and zeros everywhere else. Notice then we have our standard matrix where we have the identity matrix up on the left, we have the zero matrix here, the R matrix down here and the Q matrix down here. The Q is only this portion of the matrix, the R is this portion of the matrix, then the O is here and then the I is there. Now to find the what we call the stable transition matrix we need to convert it to this matrix so we need to go from here to here. Notice the I and zero stays the same but this instead of having the R matrix this portion of the matrix here we're going to get F times R here and Q sub N which is typically equal to zero. Now what is the F times R matrix? Well we first need to find the F matrix which we call the fundamental matrix. And the fundamental matrix is the, the identity matrix minus Q so this minus Q then you take the inverse of that to get the fundamental matrix and then we multiply it times the R matrix which is the matrix right over there. Alright, so what does that look like? Well first we go F is equal to I. Now since Q is just a one by one then we need to have an I which is just one by one so this is going to be the matrix I. Oop. Well, the matrix I is going to be the matrix one minus the matrix Q which is 0 0.3 and then we need to take the inverse of that. So when we subtract that, that's of course pretty easy subtraction. So this would be equal to 1 minus 0 0.3. That would be the 0 0.7 matrix. But we have to take the inverse of that. Now the question is, what is the inverse of a 1 by 1 matrix? Well, just like any number, it's 1 over that. So this becomes equal to the matrix of 1 divided by 0 0.7, which we could write as the matrix of 10 divided by 7. So there is the F or the fundamental matrix. So now what we're going to do is we're going to need to find F times R. So F times R is equal to 10 divided by 7 for the fundamental matrix times the matrix R and R would be this matrix right here which is 0 0.2 and 0 0.5. So when we do that we get 10 times 0.2 which is 2 so this becomes 2 over 7 and 5 over 7 and then if we want to write that in a decimal format then you need a calculator so 2 divided by 7 is 0 0.8586 so that would be the 0 0.286 so the first element and on 5 divided by 7 we get 0 0.714 0 0.714 so this is the F times R matrix so now we can go ahead and put down the what we call the stable transition matrix that would be when you have the transition matrix multiplied by itself and many, term, many number of times to finally get to the stable matrix and so we know that the stable transition matrix will be equal to I which is 1 1 0 0 we have the 0 matrix right here then we have the F times R matrix which is this right here so 0 0.286 and 0 0.714 Oops. 7, 1, 4. And over here is the Q sub n matrix by definition that would also have to be 0. Now notice, to a quick check, if we add the numbers up horizontally, every row should add up to 1. And sure enough, this is 1, this is 1, and this plus this is 1 as well. So we're good. Now, what will be the final state or the stable state 
What is that equal to? Well, again, that depends on the initial state as well. So let's come up with a few initial states to see how that would work. So let's say that our first initial state, let's say that A starts with 50% of the, of the um, population. Let's say that B starts with, uh, how about 30% of the population. Let's say that C starts with 20% of the population. So that's all of 100%. So if that's the case, if that's the initial state, what will the final state be? Now we gotta be careful. Because normally we have A, B, C, A, B, C like this, but in this case we don't. Since we changed to the standard form, we have B, C, A, B, C, A. So from states B, C, A to states B, C, A. And I should, I should mark that this is the, the two states like that. Okay, so if that's the case, our initial matrix should also have that particular order, B, C, A, not A, C, B. So what we're going to do now, so we're going to solve for X. So we have X. The stable, the stable state matrix is going to be the initial state matrix times the, oop, I might as well put in the, in this form, times the stable transition matrix. All right, so let's do our first state matrix. And so we have, here we have, let's see, where we go? Uh, BCA, so I need BCA here. So might as well mark it like this. So the, initials, the initial state matrix will have BCA. B is 30%, 0.3, C is 20%, 0.2, and A is 50%, 0.5. And then we multiply that times the stable transition matrix, which we found over here. Okay, there's my transition matrix. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Then we have 0 0.286 and 0 0.714 and 0. That's Right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So that will give us the stable uh, state matrix. All right, let's see what we get. We probably need a calculator for that. Uh, maybe not. 0 0.3 times 1 is 0 0.3, and then 0 0.2 times. So what we need to do is multiply this row times this column to get the first element. So that's 0 0.3, that's 0, and that would be, oop, yeah, we do need a calculator. So 0 0.3 plus 0.5 times 0.286 equals 0 0.0 or uh, 0 0.433, 0 0.443. Again, notice that this is B, C, A. That would be the population in each of those three states at the end when it's stable. For the C population, we multiply this row times this column and we get 0.2 times 0.5, oop, let me take a 0.2 times uh, 1 plus 0.5 times 0.714 equals. So we get 0 0.557. 0 0.557. And then finally, when we multiply this row times this column, we get 0. So what that means is at the end, when we have this initial state, when 30% of the population in B, 20% of the population in C, and 50% of the population in A, at the end, B ends up with 44.3% of the population, and C ends up with 55.7% of the population, and A ends up with zero, which is obvious, but it's not so obvious what B and C will end up with. So let's try one more initial state. Let's say that uh, we have an initial state that's a little different, so let's go ahead and put down the numbers. So let's say that uh, this starts at 60% and this is at 10% and this is at, uh, let's see, 10, 70, 30%. Okay, let's say that that was the initial state. Let's see what the final state will be in this case. So make sure we get the numbers right. Uh, we have BCA, so for B we have 10%, so we have 0 0.1. For C we get 30%, 0 0.3, and for A we get 60%, 0 0.6. So again, that is B, C, A, and then we multiply that times the stable transition matrix, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 0.286, 0 0.714, and 0. And now let's see what our stable state matrix will be, B, C, A. And so let's go ahead and multiply that again. So we have this row times this column to get the first element. So we get 0 0.1 plus... 0.6 times 0.286 equals, so 0 0.272, 0 0.272. What about C? Well, it's this, this row times this column, so we get 0.3 plus 
0.6 times 0.714 equals 0 0.728. 0 0 0.728. And finally, this row times this column gives us 0. Again, you can always make sure you did things correctly by adding the rows together and making sure they add up to 1. In each case, this adds up to 1, and this will add up to 1. So in this case, you can see that if this was the initial state, that B will end up with 27.2% of the population, and C will end up with 72.8% of the population. And that's how we use absorbing Markov chains. In this case, we have two absorbing states instead of just one absorbing state, and that's how it's done.